question to our identity as a species, but it's surprisingly difficult to answer. In fact, it seems that the harder we try to figure out what makes us unique, what makes us human, we find that it's harder and harder to answer what that question actually is and figure out what sets us apart. Because we are not distinct from all the other animals. There's a sort of biological continuity to all of the living things. I mean, if you were to go back and trace your ancestors back one by one, you'd eventually have a common ancestor with everyone in this room. You go back further, and you have a common ancestor with every human being alive today. You go back even farther than that, and you'll join up with chimpanzees. You go farther, and you'll join up with gorillas, and you keep going back and back, and you'll have more and more species that you have a common ancestor with until you get to all the living things. So it's a continu there's continuity throughout all of life. It's not a matter of, oh, humans are set in this specific category. There's, because we're all descended from the same life forms, we have our own um, similarities between all life. Especially we have similarities with apes. We as humans are apes. The other great apes are chimpanzees and bonobos, gorillas and orangutans. Since these are our closest relatives, they have a lot of similarities with us. And things that we often would think would set us apart are found in them to a different degree. Like, for example, it used to be thought that man was the tool maker, that our ability to modify objects in our environment and use them for our own purposes is what set us apart. But it turns out that this is not true. Jane Goodall has discovered that chimpanzees will sometimes take a twig and remove all the leaves from it and use it to fish out termites out of their mouth. There are other circumstances where they'll modify objects in their environment in order to achieve their goals. I mean, this isn't building a computer or an airplane or anything, but it's still the basic concept of modifying their environment, making a tool and using it. So, like I said, this is a matter of degree and not kind. There's not one set thing that sets humans apart from all the other animals. It's a matter of we can do things to a greater extent, but it's not a matter of the things we can do. Now, um, the one thing that I'll be focusing on is language. Language is amazing when you think about it. Here I am, I'm having thoughts in my own brain, and I'm able to put them in all of your brains by way of language, by making certain sounds that we can all interpret, and we can send ideas from one mind to another. Language is a type of symbolic communication. Like, for instance, when I say sofa, you all know I'm talking about this type of thing, but there's nothing inherent in the sound to sofa that would attach it to that. It's a type of symbolic communication. Now, um, we can see this in other animals to a certain extent. Like, for instance, monkeys and prairie ducks do this too, have um, different alarm calls for different <coughs> things. Like if there's a bird that's going to be preying on them, they have a different sound than if it's a snake on the ground, so they know how to respond differently. And this can be seen as some type of symbolic communication because they have a certain sound that's attached to a certain object, even though it has nothing inherently to do with it. Now, it would be a stretch to consider this language, though, because it's just one sound for one object. Language is more than that, it has abstract <coughs> nature to it. Being able to talk about things that are not a physical object, and being able to put words in a different order to mean different things. But I would like to stress, however, that language does not have to be words. Um, it's been increasingly accepted that you can have nonverbal forms of language. Um, American sign, well, sign language used to be not considered a form of language, but people gradually come to see that sign language has all the basics of language. It has grammar and syntax and vocabulary. It's just that the words are formed with your hands and your body rather than your voice. So um, there are different types of sign language. American Sign Language is the one spoken, both used in um, the United States. So that's ASL, I'll be calling it that for short. Um, so various attempts have been made to teach ASL to non-human primates, to chimpanzees and gorillas and orangutans. And they've been able to pick up some signs and use them to communicate. Now, some people disagree and criticize this and say what they're doing is not actual language. They're just having a form of conditioning. There's various criticisms which I'll address. But I'd like to stress that there is the basis of language there. So um, the first study with um, chimpanzees in language was um, earlier on. They tried to teach chimpanzees how to talk. There was a chimpanzee named Vicky. And some people tried to teach her how to use spoken language. All right, by the end, she was apparently only able to say four words, mama, papa, cup, and up. And those were only intelligible to the people who had raised her. Now, um, so because of this, some people thought that apes couldn't use language. But there was a couple named Beatrix and Alan Gardner who thought that the problem with the study was not that apes weren't capable of language, but that they're not capable of speech. Their vocal cords are different from ours, so they can't produce the same sounds that 
They can, however, use their hands to communicate. So they, um, the gardeners decided to try to raise a chimpanzee <coughs> like they would a deaf child. They took a chimpanzee to the Washo and basically brought her up as they would a deaf child. They signed in front of her, and she was able to pick up signs based on that. Washo learned about 350 signs in her lifetime, and the study went on to add more chimpanzees. It's currently known as the Chimpanzee and Human Communication Institute, or CHCI. Uh, it's currently located in Ellensburg, Washington. I actually got the chance to visit there once. So it's really cool. But um, perhaps the most famous ape to learn sign language was Coco. Probably a lot of you have heard of Coco. Coco is a gorilla who learned um, about a thousand different signs. She's still alive today. Um, but one study that was sort of different from the others was NIM. Um, there was a chip in, well, a researcher named Herb Terrence was interested but skeptical in Project Washo. So he wanted to try to replicate it. So he got a chimpanzee named Nim Chimsky, which is a pun on the linguist Noam Chomsky. Um, but um, so Nim was, um, they tried to do the same sort of thing where they raised him to be able to sign. And this project wasn't really a success. He only learned about 125 different signs. And he mainly just repeated what the researchers said in order to get food. So that led Herb Terrence to conclude that apes can't really use sign language. It's just a complex form of conditioning. But what we can see from the other studies is that actually they can. So all the criticisms they have can be addressed with the other studies. Like um, Nim, for example, only signed basically what the researchers signed. He repeated what they said in order to get a treat. But this isn't what you see at the CHCI, which the Chimpanzee Human Communication Institute, like I said. Um, there, the chimpanzees repeat what's signed to them a relatively small amount of time. And in fact, they actually repeat what's said to them less than uh, children aged three to five, human children. So they're not just parroting back what's said to them. Um, another criticism, though, is that the researchers are projecting their own meaning onto what they see signed. They'll see, like, oh, the chimpanzee looks like it's trying to sign dogs, so that's what it means. But um, because some deaf people have gone there and seen them and said, okay, this doesn't make any sense. What they're doing is in sign language. We can't understand it. But the problem with that is that the chimpanzee's hands are shaped a little bit differently from ours. For instance, when they try to sign, this is black in sign language, but they can do it like this because their hands aren't set up quite the same way. So they have to modify the signs in order to use them. So we can tell that it's not the researchers projecting their own meanings due to double-blind studies where they'll show a picture to the chimpanzees and the chimpanzees will sign what's in it and the researchers will look at the chimpanzees and see what the sign is without seeing the picture. So that way they're able to figure out, they're able to tell based on the sign rather than figuring it out from context. So from that we know that they actually can understand it once you're used to the chimpanzee specific way of signing. Now, um, other people like Herb Terrence say that it's merely just conditioning. You can get animals to do amazing things if you give them treats in exchange for it. So it's just a complex way of asking for a little bit of food or but again, that's not what we see when we look at the other studies. The chimpanzees will sign to each other and even sign to themselves. They'll sign to humans in situations where they wouldn't get a reward. Perhaps the most dramatic example of this was a chimpanzee named Lulus. Now, um, Washo, if you'll remember, was the first chimpanzee to learn sign language. The gardeners gave another chimpanzee named Lulus to her to raise as an adopted son. And for years, the researchers did not sign at all in front of Lulus, other than I think five questions. So, but he was able to pick up sign language just based on observing Washo and the other chimpanzees in the study. Essentially, he learned how a human can learn language by observing those around him. Um, and another criticism, um, Noam Chomsky, the linguist, has said that um, chimpanzees can't really be capable of sign language because if they were, they would have surely picked it up in the wild to help for their own adaptive like, ability to survive. But actually, we found that is actually true. In, um, Uganda, a study has shown that the chimpanzees there have about 66 distinct gestures that they'll use with specific meanings. So they actually have some form of sign language in the wild. Now another criticism is that chimpanzees and apes are basically <coughs> repeating, well they're just signing but they don't actually know what the signs mean. But we can see that that's not true. They can apply them to different concepts. For example, um, the chimpanzees at CHCI learn the sign open with reference to a door they're able to apply that sign to like a book or a container. In other words, they have to understand what opening means as a concept in order to apply it correctly to different contexts. The same with more. Washa learned the sign more with reference to tickling, but she's able to apply it to more of other things. Um, also, they're able to combine signs in novel ways that show 
um, the band's family they meet. Washa when she saw a swan for the first time, signed Waterbird. When Coco encountered a ring for the first time, she signed Finger Bracelet. And some of the chimpanzees of the CHCI call a watermelon drink fruit, despite never having heard it referred to as that. They were able to combine these signs in ways that make sense and that would be impossible if they did not actually understand what the signs mean. But because they understand the meaning behind the signs, they can put them together in a way that makes sense and is intelligible. Finally, people like Herb Terrence say that maybe they understand what a specific sign means, but they have no concept of grammar or syntax. They can't understand the word or it would make a difference. But again, that's not really true. Um, the chimpanzee Dar, the Chimpanzee and Human Communication Institute, is able to sign Tickle Dar if he wants to be tickled, and Dar Tickle if he's doing the tickling. I mean, this is obviously isn't the most complex form of grammar or syntax, but the basis is there. It can't be like Noam Chomsky says, that grammar evolved in the brains of humans after we split the chimpanzees. There has to be the basis that's underlying in all these for them to be able to have the concept of, of the medical subject and object, like in the case of dark tickle and tickle dark. So the point I'm trying to make is that, once again, it's a matter of degree and not kind. Language is present to some extent in apes. Obviously, they couldn't have a conversation like I'm having right now, but they're able to communicate from one between, each, um, between themselves, among themselves, they're able to communicate <coughs> ideas in some form of language. Animals aren't really so different from us. They have the same underlying things that make us unique. It's just in a different extent.